We live in the Kananaskis region of the foothills of Alberta, right near the Sheep River. This one acre property we have developed from scratch. We had to fence the entire property against the deer, which are so prevalent in our area. We have great access to the Rocky Mountains nearby, and a lot of our weather patterns are created by the Rockies. We have Chinook winds that we have to deal with every winter, as well as warming temperatures and drastic temperature drops at times. This is a picture taken in April, so temperatures can be extreme. Our house we built by ourselves and have renovated the old skid shack that was attached. Recently building raised beds near the kitchen to supply much of our needed vegetables in the summer months. We always build things out of recycled materials wherever possible. We have an outdoor kitchen that we use as well as gardens that we enjoy and live in throughout the year. One of the joys of doing things this way is that it's like a treasure hunt trying to find materials that you can use or reuse or even find new purposes for. Our outdoor kitchen is also close to our entertainment area which we use in the summer months mainly as well as spring and fall. We invite woofers who are volunteers in our place to come and help us in the in the summertime with the gardens and we couldn't do it without them. Most of our flowers are perennials in fact and they are there to attract a diverse array of pollinators into our yard which will in turn give us a better production in our fruit and other foods. We mix a lot of fruit trees in with beautiful plants to create some interest and productivity. Our greenhouse has been entirely built out of recycled glass and we have many herbs right outside the back doorstep that are used for tea and medicine and simply for culinary purposes. We allow many of our plants to go to seed so that we do not have to seed them each year. We collect rainwater off of every roof surface on the property and many thousands of liters. As well, we planned our house to be south facing so that we could propagate plants in the spring for the garden in there before we put them into the greenhouse. Our productivity is due mainly to the fact that we create our own compost from the animals that we keep. We dry our clothes outside using the sun or the air and even inside the house using the air. We also grow about 2,000 pounds of food in this yard every year which for a family of four is a very large quantity of our food needs. We enjoy a lot of fruit and berry bushes as they are very productive in this climate and we have a small food forest uh, which is starting to produce more than what we can eat. Our raised beds are made up of garage door panels which we swapped with a neighbor for a slab of beer. Every year we are creating more production and depending on uh, the climate of that year, we have always some success and some losses. Our house we designed ourselves to suit our needs and to integrate with the garden. Some things we use many recycled materials, other things we used expensive materials that would last longer like the cedar deck. We enjoy our furry friends that keep us company on this journey. And here's an example of a rainwater tank and another rainwater tank full from the summer of 2019. Sometimes we even get to hang out in these beautiful areas we've created and just enjoy the garden. Deciduous vines and trees are certainly very useful in the hot summer months, even in such cold climates. We have plans to put in a pond with the overflow of the nearby water tanks in this area. The vegetable garden is huge and does provide for most of our vegetable needs throughout the year. We integrate flowers into it as well. We have planned a very large orchard area with apples and plums and cherries and berry bushes 
and buckwheat for a green manure crop and an alternative nectar source for our bees. The garden doesn't have a lot of space in it because we don't need to mulch it this way, um, but very productive in the way that we've always grown it. We use child labor whenever possible to help us on our projects and this is an awesome opportunity to teach our kids about the wonderful aspects of growing your own food. We use uh, our own comfrey to make a fertilizer which we um, soak down into this big barrel of water. We fill it about two-thirds full of comfrey leaves and uh, the rest of the way we fill up with water and we stir it occasionally and then pour it out onto the garden as a fertilizer. So we even grow plants to make our own fertilizer as well as using chicken and rabbit manure for compost. Our greenhouse serves many purposes. We grow all plants that need a lot more heat in there, like eggplants and peppers, but we also use it for drying or curing plants in the fall when it starts to become frosty outside. Like these tomatoes. After we pick the tomatoes, we drag them into the greenhouse and then we harvest them from the vines once they are ripe. We have to watch the first frost days in the early fall to be able to do this. And it's not easy to find that day exactly. We also use our garage to ripen such things as tomatoes and to store our seed. We would never use this area for parking cars. Sometimes we have a huge harvest, especially of the bro broccoli and black currant, beans, and when we are processing in the early fall, it's a lot of work. We take zucchini, for example, and we turn it into chocolate cake. We take our peppers and we make harissa. We take our basil crop or dandelion and we make pesto. We take our cucumbers and we ferment them or turn them into regular dill pickles. We also harvest our own um, honey from our bees and these are some of the products that you see that come from our garden. We have many freezers full of blanched food and we have many jars full of dried herbs. Our chickens give us eggs and manure. We use rabbits for meat and manure and we create our own yummy compost which we put back on the garden. We do our mulching with cardboard and bark mulch when we need to make new pathways and we pot up all of our own plants which are started indoors before they're moved to the greenhouse and finally planted out. Flowers that we grow are usually for enjoyment but we always find varieties that the bees go crazy for. And there are many bumblebees and native pollinators that also frequent our flowers in our garden, as well as our own honeybees, creating a diverse flavor of honey for us. Some of our flowers are used for insect pest predators. And in the fall, things can look like a scary movie with the amount of work that needs to be done and all of the harvesting. But all winter long, we enjoy the fruits of our labor.